Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. He's just coming off of ISL Season 2 with the LA Current. He's an NCAA All-American. He's coming at us from Austin, Texas, really r- right up the road from me. We've got Maxime Rooney today. Maxime, how's it going, man? I'm doing great. Coleman, super happy to be on. Finally got to be on, and I'm happy to be here with you. I'm happy we got you on. You you had a busy fall, and uh, so so it's it's been you know we had to work on the scheduling a little bit. Totally understandable, but let's break it down. Uh, yeah, like seriously, where to start? Let's let's. I mean, ISL was exciting. Let's start there. When when did you know you were going to be a part of the ISL this season? Oh man, that was, so that was uh, super exciting. Um, kind of to find out. I found out in August. Um, originally. Mm-hmm. When I found out that NCAAs were canceled, I got a couple of GMs reaching out to me. Thank you to those GMs um, because during that time it was very uncertain as to like, okay, am I gonna, am I gonna do the ISL or not? Because I was still in school. Um, and so in March, I found out that you know NCAAs was canceled, and we weren't. I mean, we weren't going to get our eligibility back. Or I think we found that out in June at least. And um, then I. I declined uh, because I I wanted to focus on my school. Um, and so right when I found out that all the classes were going to be online, that's when I talked with Coach Eddie, Coach Wyatt, and Coach Patrick about setting up a plan that, okay, maybe we can explore entertaining options for, you know, being drafted for the ISL. And um, <clears throat> right when they said, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. We didn't know when we we're going to race again. Let's do it. And especially because it was also a training camp. Um, so I started calling, uh, the GMs again, being like, Hey, I know it's a little late in the process, especially because, uh, you know, we were maybe about two months out from leaving in August, um, called them. And, uh, luckily I called Lenny and he said that he had like another spot left. And I was like, I, I, I was like, okay, of course I need to like, talked to my parents and everything, but I was like so excited and I called him and I accepted. And um, so yeah, August, and then we made, I think we made our official announcements in sometime of September and uh, we left a month later in October. I mean, is that, did that kind of like that moment when you signed, it's like, did, did that kind of solidify, like I'm a pro swimmer now? Absolutely. And that's like, <clears throat> Uh, it was, it was really interesting because right when I signed and then right when I made the announcement on, on Instagram about like me signing with LA, I was like, I remember uh, there's a story that came into my mind to share with my parents to be at being in, in fourth grade. And, you know, in elementary school, they're always like, Oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And like the, the, kind of those career aspirations, I remember saying to the class, I was like, I want to be a professional swimmer. And it, it was just like really cool to kind of have that come full circle and to really live that out. And then actually being a, a professional swimmer in, in the months of October and November. I mean, of course I'm a professional swimmer now, but actually like being there presently in the bubble um, as a career uh, that, that was, it was super, super cool. And I say it's a dream come true. Cause I, I think it's, it's, it's awesome. I never would have dreamed of that, like this type of opportunity when I was growing up and it's here now. So very grateful. I think that's one of the coolest parts about ISL is that, you know, when in, in, in the U S at least if you're a pro swimmer, you go to pro swims and you can earn money there. And, you know, it's like for, for a select few, you have, they have suit deals and, and they get to do things with that. And like, you, it, it's like, you get to live like a pro lifestyle of a swimmer sometimes, but like with ISL, it's like, you're, it really professionalizes the sport and gives you that sense of like, okay, I'm, I'm going to work today. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my job. And like you said, I think a lot of young, young swimmers are like, I want to be a pro swimmer when I grow up. And that really materializes that goal of, all right, I'm signing the contract. I'm going to the bubble. I'm yeah. It's like, a, that's, that's super cool. You get to, you get to actually live that pro lifestyle. And so you get to Budapest. Mm-hmm. T- tell me about those six weeks. 
Oh, man. Okay. So uh, just to kind of go through a little bit of the process, because um, actually, um, so I was on the same flight as Willa Cone, and we actually almost di didn't make our first flight uh, <laughs> because uh, so uh, the week prior to leaving, so we left on a Saturday. I got tested on the Monday for Texas because we have to get tested weekly. So I got tested Monday, got my results back around Tuesday night. And so I submitted that to our team manager, John, because he's kind of in charge of our compliance. So that gets us into the pool. So I was able to train for that week leading up um, to us leading on the Saturday. And then the ISL had requested um, actually ISL slash I'll say Hungarian like partner that, that we were working with. They requested that we get tested on Wednesday and Friday. And so I got my results back Wednesday pretty easily. And then Friday, um, I didn't get back until actually Saturday afternoon. So when we were checking in, the lady was like, oh, we actually need a result that's within 48 hours of you leaving. And so I didn't have that Friday result. And so I had to call my manager, um, Ben Lee, and me and Will, luckily, we found the paper that said, okay, they're being a little bit lenient. And it's, it's kind of a, it's a sign of goodwill that we were went testing at, or sorry, or sign of good faith that we tested. Like I tested three times that week. And uh, luckily we got on the flight. <laughs> Ironically, right when I landed in New York for my, my first connection, uh, I got my test results. So we were clear, got to Budapest. Um, I, I connected through Frankfurt and on Saturday, no Sunday, that's when we officially got there. Um, Immediately got no, nasal like nasal swabs. Um, about a twenty four hour quarantine until we got our results back. And right when we got our results back, we were allowed to be like kind of released from our room. Monday we took off. Tuesday was our first pool day and training day. And then um, you know from there it was kind of set into the routine of like okay we kind of sleep eat swim. And then maybe for me and a couple others we had school. So um, yeah, so I mean it was it was typically. Um, aside from fluctuating uh, schedule changes with because uh, our, our, our food times were different, our training times diff varied day to day, of course, because they wanted to fit everyone in the competition pool or the long course pool. And of course, they had to work around you know, different weight times as well. So it's pretty much uh, it's normal, like, eat, honestly, eat, sleep, swim. Is, uh, that's the that's the go to quote for that type of six weeks. Yeah. So. The, take me so it's yeah it's i mean it sounded like a process getting there but overall it sounds like things went fairly smoothly that first that first competition i remember you know it was everyone was excited you know i was sitting at home like yes we get to watch swimming again <laughs> and uh it's like one of the first races I, I think it was the 400 free relay that you anchored uh, and, well, so I anchored four free relay and the four medley. I remember the two because this was my first. It was like yeah. my first pro outing, I would say. So, um, yeah, that four hundred for the four hundred free relay, uh, my teammates did an awesome job and they got me a pretty comfortable lead. Um, I think at that first meet we were three hundred six collectively and we were like, "Wow, this is pretty solid. <laughs> like we're gonna be pretty good moving forward." And um, you, you know, we kept, just kept on building that momentum here and there. Uh, that four hundred medley relay, I think we were three twenty two, and that's where. Um, I just out-touched um, the energy standard swimmer. I think his name is Simonis Billis. Um, mm -hmm. And I was just – I saw my team. Murph was, like, kind of jacking me up behind the box. He was like, Ashton, you got this. You're the champ. And it was just like, dude, that's like that's like Ryan Murphy right next to me. He's, like, Olympic gold medalist, world record holder, and he's hyping me up, you know. <laughs> so I was, um, I was uh, super, super, like – high on energy, ready to go. I saw my team and, um, cause that like seeing the boxes kind of go crazy. That's, uh, I think that's like one of those things that just really gets you riled up inside. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to explode for them, you know? And one of the crazy thoughts too, for me was like, there weren't even that many spectators. I was like, we're doing all this. This is self, this is like literally the excitement is a bit self-generated within our team. And so I think our, our energy throughout the couple of weeks was, it's really high. We had a great team camaraderie, team chemistry because of it. And, um, uh, but go, sorry, going back to the relay. Um, yeah, I just remember, I think the, the third wall. So I dive in one, two, three. Yeah. Third wall. I see over there and I'm like, there's no way I, I, I'm, I want this. So I like, I hit the button and I want, and I wanted to win it for the team and which set us up for, uh, selecting those skins and, uh, you know, Murph took care of business and his, rest of history is pretty cool. So, 
Yeah, I I think it was that medley relay anchor where it was just like, dude, Max seems like going crazy. He's on another level. Like this is it, it set the ISL up so well, I think, for me, with that swim in particular, because it was it, it just really snowballed into a good, a really exciting six weeks of racing. Um and so so how did you feel racing that much back to back to back? Um, had you ever been in an environment like that before? I know you've been to world cups, but was that, did you find that similar? Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm going to, I'll answer this question in a couple different ways. Um, and this is partly about some of the different things I've learned as well. Um, so I think the last time I raced short course meters because of my, uh, world cup experience as a high schooler was probably in 2012 or 2014. <laughs> um, I think I was very fortunate growing up, um, my, my club coach, Steve Marsili and the Pleasanton Seahawks, we took trips to, um, you know, the different stops. So I think my first one was in Dubai in 2012, 2013, I went to Tokyo in 2015, it was Doha, but it was long course. And so the last time I really swam short course meet raced short course meters was 2013. Um, and so it kind of just a new course, um, uh, figuring, figuring that out. Um, cause it's, it's much different than short course yards. It's not up a little bit the hard way. And so, um, so with that said, new course, um, but then I would say that, okay, in, in regards to tackling races back to back, the way I compared it was, um, you know, again, fortunately for me going through the collegiate system, I've had opportunities to race back to back to back like that. Um, in within a two hour range, um, you know, a dual meet usually lasts two hours. So I'm in, okay, maybe the 200 free and another individual and then the last relay. And so that's three races or um, maybe max at max four races. Um, and especially at, you know, going the first three years at Florida, we have that try meet with it's like Florida, Indiana, Texas. And then, so that's a two day back to back two hour session where it's pretty high level. You know, those are top five teams. And so I think the way I would compare the ISL uh, to the NCAA is saying that, you know, the ISL is like a dual meet um, or NCAA, NCAA level meet at professional level. Um, and so I, I was like kind of trying to convert some time so I can see rel relatively where I was. And I was like, okay, maybe these are types of swims that I would have like at a big 12s and NCAA level, you know? Um, and so you're doing those swims at every, at every ISL meet. And so like, I, I guess, going from this level to this level more consistently, that's what uh, I saw it was, it was needed to be competitive. Um, and I, I was talking to a couple other swimmers when I was there and I never really realized it, but uh, someone gave me the analogy that football um, from high school to college, there's a huge jump from college to, you know, the NFL, there's an even bigger jump. And I would say that, um, you know, swimming, I think is also very similar in that way. Um, just in the, in, in the works of times that, okay, high school to college jumps from like high school dual meets to college dual meets. There's a pretty big, pretty big jump. Like I remember, I think in high school dual meets, you know, um, in my area, probably like you could, you could take the win with a 136 or 137, uh, or maybe even a 138 at a college dual meet, you know, nowadays people are consistently probably hammering down like a 134, you might see, I mean, Drew, my, my training partner, he probably could hammer down on 133 pretty easily. Um, and so it's like, it's just like, okay, wow, that's like three to four seconds, you know? And then for college, you know, if you see that Duncan Scott and Townley, they're going 140s, um, you know, converted, I would guess that's probably like a 130 or 131 or maybe faster. So it's just kind of like, okay, that's the progression, you know, you're elevating, you know, going from one level to the next to the next. And so, um, I learned a lot a bit of, uh, <clears throat> you know, how to recover, um, what I needed to do to get mentally prepped. I tried uh, a couple different things. Like, uh, I never really drink coffee, but I, I just was like, everyone's, everyone's drink coffee there. So I was like, oh yeah, let me, let me just take an espresso shot or two. <laughs> and so <laughs> good, all, all good learning. Um, I'm, I'm super pleased with it. And I think that's, uh, that's like the biggest, that's probably the best comparison I could give you with like NCAA to ISL. So. Yeah, there's. I have a few things to unpack there. I guess first of all, did did caffeine work for you? Um, it's interesting because so, okay. I I usually take two products. I have a product um in the morning. I prefer prelims if it's a prelims final meet. 
um, that has no caffeine because I like to nap in between. And then for finals, I usually take a product that has caffeine just to get that extra spike and we wake up from my nap. Mm. Um, but I, again, kind of just exploring, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm usually a pretty energetic and joyful guy for the most part. And I, sometimes I think the caffeine just threw me off, you know, cause I'm not used to it. I don't drink coffee regularly. Um, and so I think it was just like, Oh, wow. So this is a lot. Um, but again, just, I, I'm talking with a nutritionist, talk to my parents because my, my mom, um, you know, she, uh, she took care of a lot of my food growing up and she knows me kind of like what my needs are. Um, and so it, we're, we're figuring out, I mean, it's like, uh, the lessons, big chemistry experiment with like, okay, maybe we eat a little bit differently or, um, because also yeah, the food I, I found out, um, when I, I weighed myself on the way back, I was about eight pounds lighter <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. It was just, I guess that's what happens when you eat race food for six weeks. Um, cause you're trying to be at peak performance. Um, but I think there's a way that I can maintain that level, um, of like muscle and consistency and race weight without having to really drop, um, so drop that much. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, just, like I said, it was like really good to learn, trying some things out if it if it works it works if it doesn't okay we throw it out so yeah. yeah so you know the the whole thing about the isl bubble is that like you said every meet people are going elite you know world topping times and and you're supposed to you you're, you know the expectation is to be at that level every single meet so it's been so interesting talking to you know all these different athletes about how they, how they maintain that, what they do. You know, you, you just mentioned you have race food and you're eating race food for six weeks. What does that look like? And what's the difference between, you know, race food for you and just a, a normal food? Mm. Oh man. Well, okay. So yeah, I usually, I like to train at a certain weight during the season and then I like to drop down to race weight. Um, mm. just because that's probably where I'm most comfortable, you know, and of course during the season, you, you probably need to be eating more carbs and just to, to fuel your training. Right. And so it's one of those things where, uh, I was finding out, okay, what do I need to fuel my body to, uh, train and race week to week? Um, and so, I mean, on a, I just like a typical day, um, in the bubble, I would, I mean, just breakfast, uh, I would eat probably some eggs, some bacon, a little bit of pastries. Uh, their chocolate pastries there were devilish. Um, they, that's probably like, that's probably what saved me and not losing more weight. Um, but again, like, I don't really like when I prepare for me, I probably go three, I go three weeks without sweets. And so the fact that I was eating sweets to like help me, uh, there, I was like, Oh, maybe I should, uh, I should add some extra protein or something, but yeah, I just had a good protein base and some carbs set me up for the day. Cause I think I mean, I stand by the, you know, the quotes, like breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Um, cause that sets up my day. And then, uh, for lunch, some days I would have a sandwich or some pasta or some rice. And then, um, you know, in Europe, their lunch is like their lunch and dinners are very similar. And so it would almost be the same, very, very same for, for dinner. So. Mm. And so when did you start developing that, like noticing that, because that sounds like one of those college to pro professional shifts of like, this is a big difference because the differences aren't uh, necessarily just in the pool, right? It's like how you, how you're approaching your sport, which has now become your job and, you know, all the things you're doing outside of it to, to get to that next level. Yeah. I mean, it's actually, uh, it's, it's interesting you asked this, um, because I was, I was thinking about it on the way back from practice. Um, I was like, thinking about what made some of those athletes really successful, um, whether it be the guys on my team. Like I think Tom Shields has an excellent series. You know, he went a couple best times um, and he progressively got better meet to meet. And that's like six weeks or like, you know, one weekend, the next. And, uh, and then to, to, to Murph, seeing what he did, what he does, even Beryl, Gastadello, um, and even some of the, I'll say the newbies on my team, what they, what they did. And I realized that, um, they, I think experience and time is essential in figuring out kind of really what works for you, uh, because they had their routines down to a lot. And I, I remember joking with Tom about it that, you know, uh, I think, so if a meet started at two o'clock and we had, we were at the pool at 12, he would always be in the warm up pool and the competition pool for warm up. 
at one o'clock, one hour before, because we would always be in the first race together. And so I was like, wow, he's like, got it to the nail. He was drinking the same thing. He was drinking his coffee at a certain time. And I was like, okay, these are all details that I, I can kind of continue to the word, the right word is refine for myself, continue to refine uh, exactly the, the routine that works for me. And so I think that um, there's a lot, there's a lot of trial and error. Um, and as a result of that, I think there were a lot of consistent performances, but nothing that's really stood out to me yet. Um, but we continue to trial and error, I found some things that work and I'll continue to kind of do that in the next couple of weeks as I train, build my base. And then, um, as we move, as we move forward towards the, the Olympic year, you know? So, yeah. So, I mean, even, even at your last year of college, in Texas, which I'm guessing was an adjustment in itself coming from Florida, you know, just in a new environment. But I mean, did that kind of set you up for noticing those out of the pool details or did, you know, once you were done at Texas and kind of transitioned into that pro life, did that really jumpstart you noticing some of these out of the water details? Yeah, I think so. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I think I mentioned on, uh, on Brett Hawk's podcast earlier. And then also um, something that I've, I've stood by is uh, there's like, I like to say the things that worked for you will continue to work for you. You just need to take them to a higher level. And one of the things that I immediately noticed from transferring from Florida to Texas is that I think I just got back to my roots um, from training in high school. A, a lot of the sets that Eddie does um, are very similar to what my high school coach does. Um, and so I share a set with my, with my, my, my club coach. Um, and he's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we would do. You know, you, you get tired and then you try some fast, uh, you know, you have your aerobic set, then you put some speed on it. Or you have your aerobic set, then you put some kick on it. And so I, I think that now that I'm at this level, I can see the ways in which I can elevate that. And it, it looks like, okay, let's, uh, let's hydrate more. What's, what's the hydration look like? You know, okay. I, I have like a set water bottle that I, like, I'm like, I need to drink a couple of this a day. I need to, and I, for example, I like cold water. So I fill up my bottle at night, put it in the fridge, drink my water in the morning. I should be done with it before the first practice. I fill it up and then I drink one right after practice. It's just kind of those little things that keep your body in balance, you know, and then just like, okay, eating fruit, eating, um, you know, in high school, I love fruit. I like, if I, I probably eat fruit every meal, uh, only if I needed to, but, uh, I, um, that's one of the things my mom was like, Maxime, you, you know, you used to eat fruit every day. And I think like, you know, kind of, you know, having to take care of myself, you know, adjustments in college, you know, having transition from high school to college and really taking care of myself is like, I was like, Oh, I, yeah, I need to go grocery shopping kind of thing. Right. And so, I mean, really, I think it's my senior year. I really started refining of like what really works for me in that aspect. And of course, like, I don't know if you see my Instagram Maxime's meals, just wanted to put that plug in, but I, I have like, I, I put pictures of my, my food and uh, I think they're pretty tasty meals and just, you know, finding out the recipes that I like that fuel me right for practice. Um, that's all, all, all those little details. And I really, I truly think that the, like the right word is refine um, because, you know, it, it, it is in the little details now um, mentioned multiple times. I think everyone at this level, they work hard. So the physical work has been put in the investments there, they're, they're making the right decisions. And then mentally, I would even say that a lot of people like are in it to win it. And so they, they want to go for that, that competition win. And so it's like, okay, what's, you have to do the little things right to get that, that, that extra edge over others. So that's kind of what I'm figuring it out now. Okay, hold on. What is what is it at Maxime's meals? Oh, okay. Well, so so okay. I have a. It's on my Max at Maxime Rooney, but then uh -huh. on a highlight, it's Maxime's meals. Max. Okay. Okay. So yeah. at Maxime Rooney it? is Maxime's Instagram. Yeah, so I'm I'll looking pull now. Up my phone. Okay. Because uh, uh, I'll, oh. I'll I'll point out a couple of meals. It's a lot of okay. deliciousness. So um, if if you're listening right now, get on your phone. <laughs> Go to Ma at Maxime Rooney on Instagram. Give him a follow. And then we add the, the first highlight, Maxime's Meals. Take us through it. Okay. Well, so I have my spaghetti carbonara. It's a, obviously a great, great fuel source, great carbs for, you know, if you have a heavy practice the next morning. Breakfast fried rice is, uh, that's one of my favorite meals. I, I'll that probably just go good. over a couple because there's a lot. But my, okay, breakfast fried rice, I actually, I'll go through it um, because I'm half Filipino. 
Um, and my dad actually showed me this recipe because, you know, we like to save food. And so, okay, if you have leftover meat or rice from the night before, you cover your rice, you dry the rice. <laughs> and then usually the go-to, I know you're in Austin, I would go get Rudy's brisket mm-hmm. and maybe some, some hottie sausages, right? Okay, chop it all up. You throw it in the dish. You cook it for a little bit. Um, you can add rice or veggies. I usually put just like a cup of frozen veggies or some spinach, add the rice, soy sauce, and some garlic salt. Mix it all up. There you go. Cook an egg on the side. Crack the yolk on it. It's beautiful. So, <laughs> Ooh. yeah, um, it's just tasty. It's tasty. <laughs> my mouth's watering. That sounds great. <laughs> Uh, Maxime's meals. I love it. So <laughs> if you ever need food inspiration at Maxime, I, I recommend if you, if you have a recipe that you like on there, just I mean, hit me up and I'll share it with you. So <laughs> nice. Uh, so, so it sounds like food's a big deal. What is, is through those six weeks in the ISL bubble? Um, you know, as you were refining your routine, is there anything else that you kind of found that worked for you outside the pool? Yeah, I think um, I got into a stretching routine, um, you know, figuring out my Norma tech to like, kind of decompress. Um, and I found like really also like just kind of getting into good sleeping habits, setting setting like a, a time for myself to go to bed, um, you know, when my earplugs in so I could have like silence and really just doing some deep breathing before I go to sleep. And then that's all just little stuff that kind of gets me in the right headspace to recover efficiently. Mm. And so now that you've come back, <laughs> you had a, you had a whirlwind November, or, you know, a couple of weeks you were with your family for Thanksgiving, you had finals. Um, but now that you're kind of back into the routine a little bit, um, are you, where, where's the balance for you of, cause you're not preparing to race at that high level every day now, but I'm assuming you still kind of incorporate some of that same stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And so just to, to, <clears throat> to address the ISL part, it's like, okay, now that I have one, one season under my belt, I know, okay, it's six, well, this season was very unique um, because of the, the virus. Um, but six weeks, no, I know what a meet's like. Next year, if I have the opportunity to join, I know what to expect. I know the pace of wit at which it's going to be, the meet's going to be run. I know kind of the level I need to perform at. And so I will prep accordingly for that um, when the time comes. I'll plan for it well with Eddie. Um, But I think moving forward, we know that, I mean, Olympic trials is the first focus and then performing even better at the Olympics is the next. And I think if we have six months to train, um, the base work, everything starts right now. So I think setting myself up to perform my best in practice so that I could have special performances at the end of the season is that's what the, the focus is right now. And, uh, you know, how do you, how do you get ready for a normal practice day again, just like kind of outside the pool maybe versus getting, getting ready for that race day? Yeah, I think so getting ready now with what I know is, okay. I actually, I time like time my, my lunch a little bit better because if we swim three to five in the afternoon, okay, maybe I'll eat like an hour and a half out and then drink a lot of water, stay hydrated, get my bottle ready. Um, it's about a 10 minute, 15 minute drive. And so making sure that I have a little bit of time on deck to kind of like, if I tightened up on the car, right, just to open up my legs again and get oxygenated and then really warm up well. Um, and then I also added, uh, just before I sleep every night, I want, I, I want to foam roll and stretch just about 15 to 20 minutes because I think that helps for a deeper sleep. Just if my muscles are open and relaxed and a little bit more oxygenated, then uh, I'll sleep much better. And it feels good too. It's just to kind of end the day that way. And again, for listeners out there, this is, this is the next level stuff that's going to take you, you know, after you're done with college, this is, this is what's going to get you there. Cause again, these are the things that as a, as a person in the media, I don't necessarily think about all, all these extra little steps that go into these peak performances that, that we see in the pool, you know, cause, cause that's all we see, but, um, yeah, all the the twenty minutes of stretching before bed, the this this the post car stretch before practice. I mean, that's yeah. It's like really, it's really light. But the, just the thought is like, okay, 
it, it's, a, it's a bit of a transitional thought for me. Mm-hmm. It's more of like, okay, you know, I'm here at the pool now, like just kind of wiggling a little bit and now it's time to give my best. That's like everything that happened before it, you know, especially during the school year for me, because, you know, I take a lot of stress in my shoulders um, because like I, I take my school pretty seriously. And I, I would imagine other college athletes and even high school athletes do the same. And so my thing is like, when I get to the pool, nothing else really matters. It's just like, it's my time to not only be with myself and enjoy the time that I can, I have feeling the water going fast in it, uh, but also enjoying the company around me because I, we have, I have an incredible Texas family. So that's kind of like, that's the transitional thought. I would say it's like, once you enter through those doors, you stretch a little bit. Once I hop in, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's go. I'll say it's go time. So it's, it's, it's a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so lately who, what do you, when you get to practice, who are you training with? Uh, what's, what, you know, what, what's been one of your favorite sets the last few weeks or, or something, you know, you're going to enjoy or do well on. Oh man. So, <laughs> um, okay. So I had Thanksgiving week and I just kind of like just stayed active. Um, I wanted to kind of mentally reset and then I got back in and just started building up gradually. Um, you know, and he just wants us to get back into shape. So the first two weeks, um, just did a couple sets. I've been, honestly, Eddie throws me here and there. It kind of depends on the day. So it's not consistent. Um, but this week, I think we're going to hit it pretty hard because, I mean, a lot of people are leaving to return home uh, for Christmas on Saturday. Um, but this week so far, I've like I've trained with uh, Kobe Carroza, Carson Foster, Will, Drew, and Carson and Jake Foster. Um, especially with like COVID, we have to sort like we split the pool. Like we have a the pool. So some people swim on one side, some people swim on another because we're, like, we're only allowed to have like two people on the wall each time. Um, and so that also, that I think that helps in getting very specific with what our needs are. Um, at the same time, like we're, we're all just pushing each other. And again, again, I think um, I know one of the things my club coach said in, in high school, and uh, that's definitely stayed with me is it, it's never really about the practice that that's the magic, the practice. Yes, there are great practices that um, I can give you that uh, I've done. And I think they're my favorite, but it, it's definitely about the attention to detail and the effort put into it. Um, I think that something that's special about Eddie is his, um, he, he's very, um, he's very detailed in how he gives sets. And so um, one set that I'll, I'll give you is, is he, he's trying, I was the guinea pig. <laughs> He was trying it out on me. Well, so last week I did, um, I think it was two rounds of three 100s on 130. Um, I'll just give the whole set. So two rounds of three 100s on 130, a 50 easy, three 50s on a minute, 50 easy, and then four 25s on 40. Um, and so for the details now, because we were trying it out, um, on the hundreds, you wanted at least me to go 55s at least freestyle and then from i'll say if i touch at 55 i get 15 seconds of rest but from 110 to 120 he wanted uh i would not let's say pretty vig i'll say vigorous vertical kicking um and so he wanted like our chest out of the water and so i would do some vertical kicking for those and i think that's just an effort to keep your heart rate up and and so after the 10 seconds of vertical kicking, 120 to 130 is your rest, and then you're back leaving at 130 for the next rep. Okay. Cool. Did that. So the then this I is short course, right? Easy. This is short course, yeah. Okay. Um, and then the 350s were something similar along the lines of like, okay, um, go 26, 25s or 26s for fly, and then 40 to 50 vertical kick again. And interesting, I mean, it got it got a little bit a little hard also because there's the week that we were getting back into shape. Um, <laughs> and I mean, our, our, our kicks getting better. Uh, Cause I think I, for us, like our legs are, if we're out of shape, that's like the first thing that Eddie tries to get in the shape. So we were kicking a lot. Um, and then the four twenty fives are just swim fly. He really wanted us to stretch out. Just, he only gave us two strokes a lot, just hold water pretty much. Um, and just test efficiency. But that's, it's, it's something, and and that's what I like too, is, um, you know, just as much as he is going through his trial and error process of seeing what works for us. um, 
we're all doing it individually as well. Um, and we had this kick over the summer that we did. It's called Thumper Kick. And essentially, I'll, I'm going to shift my camera. Okay, so if yeah. this is a kick, he had us going up to here with our kick, almost like a, almost like a runner's heel to butt kind of thing. Uh huh. Like with their, their, cause that's like a drill. I think it's a, yeah, it's a running drill. It's like heel to butt to get your, your heels up when you run. And we were essentially doing the same in the water. Um, and I, I think it improved, uh, our kick, but I also just, I, I, I like kicking fast in practice and you go pretty slow. <laughs> so, cause you're, you're kind of kicking air on the way down. So, um, but I mean, all those things are just, I, I know he's, he's thinking about ways to help us make us better. So can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you, are you a naturally good kicker? I mean, can you like kick a 50 point on a board? Uh, not a 50 point, but I, I think, yeah, I would say, yes, uh, I am a good kicker. Um, but my legs do get tired because as, uh, and that's another thing, just learning how to manage my lifting load. Um, mm my legs definitely get tired with how I'm lifting now. So. Mm, gotcha. That's in, that's pretty interesting. So this is a little off topic, but when you got to tech, you know, you've been in Texas year and a half fish now. Um, yeah. um, did you, I, this is just more of a question about Eddie. Um, did you think it differently about your butterfly and specifically how, how you incorporated your dolphin kick into your butterfly stroke being at Texas with Eddie? Um, not necessarily, but for me, um, like even when I got to school, uh, he, he, his main thought for me was just always just, just remember to keep your hips up. Um, and so just, you know, the one kick and then the second kick, just like keep remembering that. And that's like, I think that's what, I mean, it, it gets down to the basics, just remembering those basics. Um, mm. But other than that, um, not really, you know, last year uh, in the, in our October, um, so yeah, la not this October, 2019 October, we did a lot of underwater kicking. Um, his, his popular, like his set was four 200s on 245 um, with fins on just underwater kicks pretty much. So on your back, um, and he really wanted us to have not only strong push-offs, but strong underwater. So tighten your core, make a fast kick, hit the tempo. Um, and a lot of us, uh, we threw down pretty good. Um, like I think by the end of the series of weeks that we were doing it, um, a lot of us were holding like maybe 145s to 150s or faster. Um, just kick. Like mm -hmm. I think you get one stroke into the wall just to flip and to turn on your stomach to flip. But I was like – Oh, we're that, I think it was a good way to the strengthen it. And I, I saw even at our, at our first meet, I was like, oh, wow. A lot of people are not only pushing off better, but I think their, their streamlines are getting tighter. And so it was just, it was very, it was like tailored to that time and need. And so, um, it's, we're shifting that, like what do we need now? You know? So I, I, going back to your question, I don't think there was like a more emphasis. I just think it's like, it depends on the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so this is a much broader question, but that, that might've been kind of an answer to it. You know, you, like you said earlier, you were going to world cups in 2012, 2013, you know, you've been competing on a big stage for a, a, a long, long time, you know, for, for nearly a decade. Um, how, I mean, do you, do you just, have you always loved swimming that much that you're just always, happy to be doing it or how, how have you kept, how have you kept refining yourself and kept, um, elevating your mentality, um, being in the sport as long as you have? Yeah, I think that, <clears throat> um, so in regards to my love for my love, love for my sport, um, I just, at first I just love being in the water. I think, um, that's where I'm most myself. I feel most free. Um, and on a side note, it's interesting because I talked with one of my coaches, like they can see when I'm stressed because of how I swim. Um, mm -hmm. And that's like, that's like pretty cool for a coach to notice that difference. And a lot of times it's like, because of school or like I have a big project or a couple essays or like, and I, I think I was partly stressed um, even in Budapest because I was like, okay, I'll have a deadline this weekend, have a meet this weekend. So I'm like, oh, um, but it, I think that just kind of, uh, you know, 
being in the water helps me not only kind of like release that tension sometimes, but um, it just helps me. It, it's it's kind of time set aside just for me to do what I love. Um, and so to answer your, like the kind of the second part of your question about how do you keep refining is, um, you know, I, I think it comes down to uh, first, uh, you have to increase your work ethic or workload. I think, um, you know, continue to work hard and then take it to another level and think that you have another level and you have another gear. Um, that's kind of what's going to help you improve right away. Cause I think work works, you know? And then secondly, uh, in regards to pr- refining details, um, I'm a firm believer that you never have a perfect race. And so there's always something to pick apart. There's always something that you can get better at, whether it be, um, you know, a tighter streamline, a faster turn or a tighter turn or a stronger push off the wall. Um, and then even just like recently with, I think over quarantine, I, I made a significant strength gain because I was lifting. Um, luckily I had access to, you know, weights. And so how do I best use this new strength? And I'll say the new muscle on my body to help me move faster in the water. Um, is there something that I need to change? Trying it out, you know, if it works, great. If it doesn't, okay, let's try something new. Um, you can refine efficiency with stroke count, um, kick count. And those are all the details that I think like being my first season in the ISL short course meter, I was like, okay, now I know next year. I was like, okay, I have to, for a hundred fly, say I need six to seven really strong dolphin kicks. And then I need to hold water for five strokes or six strokes a lot. And again, even that uncertainty with the five or six, it's like when I saw some of the best swimmers, I know Tom, I actually saw him in a race. I was like, I was like, I could count that because I, I was counting his counting, you know, because <laughs> I could see him lip it. I was like, oh, that's one, two, three, four, because <laughs> I just saw him counting like underwater his dolphin kicks. And I was like, wow, you know, that's like that's a, that's a detail that, you know, if you're not looking for, you might miss. And I was like, oh, he's, he's doing the right things to be where he needs to be. And so I just think. um one of the greatest things I heard in a, in an interview, uh, it was James Guy's interview actually. And I had to, I had to dissect it for a class for my English project actually, because of the, the British and Australian accents that are on it. But, um, he said that what, what's so great about Adam Peaty is, uh, what's so uh, under pressure, he doesn't change. And I think that's how it should be. You know, I think that under pressure, um, your details shouldn't change at all. You should fall back to what is your habit. And if you make a habit out of being excellent every day, then that's what you're going to fall back to. So <clears throat> wise words. I like that. a lot. I was like, I was thinking to myself when I just said that, I was like, you know what? <laughs> He's going to make this the, the, the slow swim <laughs> headline. I was like, Oh, <laughs> I was, I was thinking the exact same thing, Maxime. It's like, that'd be a good title. <laughs> um, I got, I have to ask, Speaking of butterfly, speaking of attention, these attention to details, I have to ask you one question about one of your teammates. We posted a, a video of Alvin's hundred fly at, from invite. And everyone was like, this dude takes four strokes per length on every yeah. 25. Uh, I mean, have you, have you learned, have you picked up anything from him to his attention to detail? Cause for me personally, watching him swim a race, like you can really see he, yeah. he really pays attention to that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that it's, first of all, he has excellent underwaters and I actually saw, um, I missed the opportunity to screenshot his underwater tips. Cause I think they're really great reminders, mm-hmm. but he does that every day. Um, and if it's, if it's like a quality set that we're doing a fifties or even 25s, you know, he's going to 15 meters and then four strokes into the wall is he doesn't take more than four, four strokes. And so I think he's very efficient and with how he holds the water. Um, I also think that um, because of how strong his underwaters and his kick is, uh, that helps him keep his hips up. Um, and I think that, like I told him last year, it's like, you know, the way that you're going to be under 45 and even <laughs> faster, um, is, you know, carrying that underwater speed into that first stroke into the breakout. Cause then no one's going to stop. Like it, you, you'll beat everyone underwater, but then if you carry that underwater speed into your breakout, no one's going to touch you. And so um, 
I saw that true and he's, you know, continuing to work on, I mean, I think a, a lot of breakout work is, a, it's just a little bit of power, um, but also with just how clean you eg exit, you know? Um, and so there's things that, I mean, I've seen. Um, and again, I just got back to training with them. Um, that, I mean, these last couple of weeks. So I haven't totally been able to see everyone yet, but I, I know he's been working on it. So it's, and, and again, these these aren't necessarily the things that your common swimmer is gonna oh yeah like i think i need to work on this or that you know kick count stroke count they're all things we know not 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 things you necessarily think are the, are the benefit to uh yeah. or, or the key to having these elite level swims and it's it's super interesting seeing like okay this is this is the thing that you need to work on or anyway <clears throat> so uh i don't want to take up too much of your time we've been we've been chatting for a while um these next few weeks these next couple months you know obviously like you mentioned olympic trials are in the future you know but we, we've still got a little bit um what are you looking forward to just rest of december january um just in terms of getting getting back into training or and and what are you doing outside of the pool um <clears throat> well so right now I'm taking care of my pup. Uh, she is seven months old. Her name's Hazel. I absolutely love her. She got a lot bigger um, when I was gone with, uh, in Budapest, but my brother did a really great job, you know, continuing the training that we've been doing. And so she's much better behaved than I left. And so thank you to my brother. Um, play some video games with my brothers to, to spend time with them. But actually my younger brother is fortunate to be able to come home because I know a lot of people aren't traveling right now. Um, and so he'll come home and he gets to stay with us for a month because his school's has a delayed start. Um, so I get to spend a lot of family time. Um, I think I will probably be writing a little bit here and there for my blog. And lastly, for training, I think that um, it's really time just to, you know, put my head down and put, put the work in. Um, coming back from the ISL, I wrote, um, you know, I have a lot of things in mind that I want to work on and I wrote them out a little book of uh i'll say my it's my details book um and i want to i want to put that into effect now because i think that um i think that we um <clears throat> sometimes we, we might forget those details if you know we don't write them down so that's the best way for me to remember it and um i'm gonna put those into effect have a great block of training in december and january um i think actually we i just signed up for the January pro swim meet in San Antonio. So I'll be there. And then after that, I really don't know in regards to meet schedule because of the obvious, <laughs> um, but we'll just be very intentional uh, in the way we're working, um, working closely with you know my coaches and then just having a blast with my teammates while we're doing it. So, um, and that's one of the things I, I, um, when I was in Budapest, uh, I'm really close with Drew, uh, Drew Kibler, and he was like, Maxime, I can't wait to get back for you to get back. And I was like, I can't wait to, for myself to be back because like I have like some details and we're going to get lunch and share some things. And like, I think that's just the way that not only he can help me stay accountable to my details, but the way that he's going to improve as well. Um, and ultimately, that's like what I want to see is like my buddies being fast and I'm going fast with them. So, yeah. Maxime, I, I always appreciate talking to you. I appreciate you taking the time out of your now a, a little bit less busy of a schedule. A little bit less after yes. finals <laughs> to talk with me. I was, I was so happy. I actually woke up this morning and I was like, I, um, I love this. This is a new expression I want to use. It's like the air felt crisp because I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have to take finals. I don't have any more school for like another month. So I, I can breathe easier. Um, so it's, it's, it's really nice just to focus on swimming with my family for a little bit. So, yeah. Well, yeah, again, I'm, I'm happy we got to nab, nab you for a little bit. Uh, any parting thoughts before we sign off? No, thanks for having me. I mean, I, I love I love talking swimming. I love talking life. And it's even cooler when I get to do with a cool person like you. So I appreciate it. Because <laughs> you got the, Okay, awesome. Like, so been, I've been in Austin for a year and just about eight, seven, eight months now. And like keeping Austin weird is definitely a vibe. And so <laughs> I definitely, I, I can appreciate when I see it all say.
You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.